Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna have an in-depth look at tile maps. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna go to my node2d and add a new child node. I'm going to select a tile map and click create. And a tile map in order to work needs a tile set. Now, what is a tile set? A tile set is basically a collection of things that the tile maps can draw. So let's just move over to this tile set setting and click on empty. And after we click here, I'm going to select new tile set. If I click again, you will see that here we have a tile size. Now, this tile size property is basically telling the tile set how big a single tile is in our tile map. Now, I'm using a tile map from Kenny Assets, and each of these tiles have 18 pixels uh, X and 18 pixels Y. So I'm going to write here 18 by 18. And now I can move over to this tile set tab and add my tile map. How do I do it? Well, you see here we have a plus and if I click on Atlas, I can select whichever tile map I want and I'm going to select this one, click open. It asks me if I want to automatically create the tiles in the Atlas and I click yes. And now, as you can see, the tile set is created. Now, you might notice that these tiles are maybe not perfectly aligned with our tile set. And why, why is that? Well, because if we zoom in, we can see that there is one pixel of separation between each of these tiles. So we can go to the settings here and simply add one pixel separation on X and one pixel separation on Y. And now you can see that each tile is perfectly aligned with the image. Okay, now if we want to move to our tile map, we see that we have everything that we had in our tile set. But here, since we are with the tile map, we can actually use it to draw some stuff. So let's just say that we want to draw a small platform. We could take this and put it on the screen. We could also take this, draw it like that, take something else. And if we want, we can draw something below as well. So maybe something like that. And you see, we already have a bunch of usability from this. Now this is nice and all, but tile maps are much more powerful than this. To begin with, for example, we can draw in more ways. So if I click on the crayon here, I can simply paint as I did before. But if I want, I can click on the line or I can hold shift while clicking and draw a straight line. Additionally, if I want, I can click on the rectangle or hold control and shift and draw a rectangle. Imagine if we had to draw all these tiles by hand, would have been quite a lot of wasted time. Now, if we wanted, for example, to replace these tiles with maybe something else, we can always use the paint bucket tool. And this paint bucket tool, what is going to do? Well, for example, if we select this mushroom, we can click on our tiles and replaces everything with the mushroom. Now you see that when we selected the paint bucket tool, a continuous option appeared. If I deselect this, maybe let me just undo this. If I deselect this continuous, then it is going to take all the tiles in the whole tile map that are the same and replace them. So you see that I clicked here and also replaced everything that was inside as well. Okay, now other than drawing tools, there are also utility tools here. For example, the color picker. Let me just select the crayon again. Let's say the color picker. Maybe we have a huge tile set and we do not want to look at all the tiles and find our tile. We can look inside what we have already drawn. And with the color picker selected, we can pick this thing, for example. And you see that this tile here is now selected. If we want to, for example, instead of draw, we want to erase something, then with the crayon selected and with the eraser selected, I can simply go here and erase. And obviously it works the same way with lines and with rectangles. As long as the eraser is selected, it is going to erase instead of draw. If we want to draw again, we simply deselect this eraser and see, we can draw stuff. On top of this, there are transform features. So as you can see, this tile is with the grass at the top. But if I click on this rotation button, you see it rotated my tile to have the grass to the right. I can click again on the rotation and now it's at the bottom. I can even flip it. So maybe I want to flip it vertically 
and you see that it's at the top again. And I could flip it horizontally and you can see that these brown grains here are opposite to these ones. Now, maybe this is not obvious enough, but the tile map also allows us to draw multiple tiles at once. So if we wanted to demonstrate this horizontal flip, we could select, let's say these two hearts, and we see that the half heart is to the right. And now if we click on the flip button, you see that the half heart is now to the left. Now, the last drawing tool that I'm going to show you is this place random tile tool, which helps us scatter some tiles in an area. Now let's see how this works. Let's, for example, take all these plants and maybe we want to place those plants on top of the grass. Now, if I click here with all these plants selected, you see that it scatters them. It simply puts a random tile at one spot. But if, for example, I don't want to place them manually, again, I can use the line tool with the scatter selected and you see that a bunch of random flowers here have been added. Now, maybe there are too many of them, right? But there's nothing to worry about because we can select this scatter tool and increase the scattering, basically modifies the chance of painting nothing instead of randomly selected tile. So let's just say that the scattering is one and with the scattering one, let's draw a line here and you see that only a few of these tiles have been drawn. Maybe draw another line here. Again, a few have been drawn. If we set the scatter to, let's say, three, then even fewer will be drawn. So see, just, just a few saplings here and there. Great, now you know the basics of tile maps. Let's go more in detail with additional features that the tile maps have. For example, to start with, we can always make patterns. Let's say that we have this pretty little ground block and we want to draw it again. Obviously, we could go over these tiles and draw it again manually, but what we can do is to use the selection tool and select everything that's here and go to patterns. Okay, let's select it again, sorry. And go to patterns and we can either copy and paste. So control C, control V, or we can drag and drop this to this space here. Now, if I click on this pattern and I click the crayon, see that I can repeat this pattern anywhere, anytime. Again, I'm just going to show you an example with control C and control V. Let me just select this window, Control V. You see that we have also added this pattern here. And if we want, we can draw the saplings just the way that they were here before. Now, if you're not impressed yet with the power of tile maps, then let's move on to the next step and learn how to do auto tiling. Auto tiling basically allows us to automatically draw some tiles depending on their position. So we don't even have to select each tile individually. Let's see how we do that. Let's move back to our tile set. And in the tile set properties, here we have terrain sets. If I click here, I can add a new element. And these terrain sets are basically specifying what kind of terrain I want to draw and making a collection of a certain type of terrain. So if I click here on terrains, I can add a new element and let's call this terrain grass. Okay, I'm gonna call, call it grass and I want to draw all these kinds of grass blocks. I am going to select a different color from these grass blocks and you will see soon why. Let's just select some kind of purple. Now, if I go to this paint section, I can select a property here. What do I want to paint? Well, I'm gonna click on this and I want to paint some terrains on our grass blocks. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to select the terrain set zero and here I'm going to select grass. Okay, now what do we want to consider as grass? I would see this, this, these whole elements and maybe these base elements here as well. Now that we have finally selected what makes a terrain, we need to tell Godot somehow where the terrain should be placed and in which cases. And for that, we can simply update the peering bits of a tile to basically tell the tile which are its neighbors. But let's see that in practice because it is more clear. First of all, you see that when I select a single tile, I have this little square around it. Now, this could be a square, or if you selected match corners, it could only be matching the corners, or if you only selected match size, as you can see, it only matches the sides. But 
I'm going to go with the most complex one. And you can continue from there with corners or whatever else you want. But the main idea is that in each of these peering bits, the center one represents the current tile. So when do we want to draw this tile which has borders around it at any time? Well, we would probably want to draw this, so this thing in the center, only when there's nothing around it. So if there's nothing around it, we draw this. Okay, when do we want to draw this one? Well, we would like to draw this one when it's connected to something on the left and when it's connected to something on the right. Okay, that's great. Now, when do we want to draw this one? As you can see, it has a border to the left, so it means that it basically has nothing to the left, but it has no border to the right, so it must have something to the right. We are gonna do the same for this one. I'm gonna click on the center and to the left, and to the right we are not gonna click because it has a border. Okay, let's move on. What about this one? Well, it's obviously a point in the center as before, and below there is no border, and it's going to probably be connected to something else, so I'm going to draw something here as well. Okay, now what about these ones? Well, first of all, they look very similar to what's on the top, so this is going to be similar as well. And additionally, we see that they have no border at the bottom, so I'm going to add one bit here at the bottom, another one here, and another one here. If I were to move to the others, Again, it's the same process. This one has nothing at the top, nothing at the bottom, so I'm adding it there. This one looks like it has nothing at the nothing at the top, sorry. And we are finished with this as well. And let's look at these other ones following the same process. We kind of got the gist of it and we can draw everything. So let's look at an example. This one had nothing at the left, nothing at the right and nothing at the top, so we basically drew something in each of these spots. And finally, this one has something at the top, something at the left, something at the bottom, and something at its right. Okay, now that we drew this, let's see the actual magic of tile maps. I'm gonna click on tile map, the rains, select the grass terrain, and select this connect mode. I'm going to show what all these modes mean in a second. And let's just draw a single tile. If I draw a single tile, you can see that it drew the borders around it. I didn't select any kind of tile, it automatically knew that it should draw this. Okay, but what if we drew a line? You see, we drew a line and it knew automatically to draw the borders around it perfectly, with no borders in between or anything like that. If we want to draw a square, for example, you see it's a perfect square with the perfect tiles set. And if we want to do, draw maybe a more complex form, so maybe something like this, then we can draw it freely with no problem. Now, what is the difference between this mode of uh, connect mode and this path mode? Well, the main difference is that connect mode connects any tile we draw with any tile around it. So if, for example, here I want to draw four more tiles, you see it connects them with what is already on the screen. But if, for example, I draw this again and I go with the path mode, now this path mode connects everything in the current stroke. So you see that I'm drawing something and everything is connected. But if I draw near this thing, you see that they are no longer connected to each other. Now, finally, if we have any kind of problems, maybe we are missing some tiles and uh, this generation is not doing things properly. What we can do is to select an individual tile and replace something that doesn't look right with this individual tile. So for example, maybe I want to replace this corner for some reason with a whole tile block, then we can do this at any time. And you can see that it is no longer automatically connecting tiles, it is simply drawing the same tile again. If we want to maybe fix this and draw again connected tiles, we can draw something like this and have this uh, cute pattern looking like some kind of castle or something. Yeah, but there's a bunch of things that you can do with auto tiling. Let's, for example, move on and create auto tiling for these trees. Okay, how would we do that? 
Well, first of all, we go to the tile set and we want to add some new kind of terrain, right? And what terrain do we want? Well, we want to add terrain for the leaves and for these branches. So let's just say here that this is going to be leaves and this is going to be branches. Maybe let's not have it green. Oh yeah, I said that uh, we are going to use this purple color. Why do we use it? Because if we use something, let's say brown here, it would have been pretty hard to notice where we drew our appearing bits. Okay, but let's move on to the leaves. The leaves are going to be very similar to what we did already on, uh, maybe let's make this bigger, uh, to what we already did on our grass tiles. Why? Because we are going to select all these leaves. I'm going to select the leaves terrain and I'm going to draw on it. And how do we draw it? Well, it's very similar to what we already did here in our grass terrain. So I'm just simply going to draw here no peering bit because this piece of leaf has nothing around. Here I'm going to draw the bits like this because for example this bit only has something below it and nothing else around and I'm going to repeat the process in the same manner. I know I have been repeating this technique a bunch of times already but it is very important to understand this properly. Oh and by the way you saw I made a mistake here. If you want to remove the mistake you can click right click and it deletes basically those bits from there. Okay, and we are simply doing the same pattern that we did here. Now, the branches are going to be more interesting. Why? Because we are going to start combining terrains. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's select again everything that is going to be branches. Okay, these are going to be branches. And let's figure out how we are going to do this. Well, first of all, let's take the simple ones. This has something at the top and something at the bottom. This again is just another variation of this, has something at the top and something at the bottom. This one has something at the top, something at the bottom and something to the left of it. Again, we're measuring things relative to this whole sprite. We know that this sprite is going to have another sprite somewhere on the left. Don't let yourself get fooled by this branch that is at the top left corner and put a bit here. It's not here, it's going to be on the left because we are going to have an image to the left that is going to continue this branch. Okay, this one has something to the left and something to the right. This one has only something to the right. And this one has something to the left, something to the right. We repeat the same process here vertical here, right, and like this. Okay, but there are two special types of branches. And why are these special? Well, this one looks like has leaves around it, right? So it for sure has some wood at the bottom because this is the tree trunk, so it has some wood at the bottom, but it looks like it has leaves to the left, to the right, and to the top. Okay, so how do we specify that it has leaves? Well, we can simply select here the leaves and put some leaves bits here. And now our tile set knows that there are leaves to the left, right, and top. What about this one? Well, this is again branches that have branches to the top. And at the bottom, what is at the bottom? Well, since this is the root of our tree, it must be in the ground. So I'm going to put some grass below the root, okay? The process, as you can see, is mostly the same, but we specified what kind of terrain we have around this tree. Okay, and now if we were to go to our tile map after we save, let's select terrains. And sometimes maybe it uh, does not get updated just make sure to deselect it and then select it again. And you can see that it gets updated afterwards. Okay, if I were to draw some grass, let's maybe cut everything that's here. Sorry, <laughs> let's uh, cut everything, not, not draw everything. Okay, and now let's uh, simply draw some grass here. Okay, now if I want to go here to branches, or maybe two leaves. Let's draw all the leaves first because they are more simple. Let's make a square tree, something like this. Make it a bit taller. 
and we see that the leaves are drawn perfectly. If we draw a vertical line, it's also drawn perfectly. If we draw a single tile, it's perfectly drawn. And now we can draw the branches. Well, how do the branches go? Well, we start from inside the leaves and we move to the bottom here at the ground. And as you can see, the branches have been drawn and they have been perfectly connected to our leaves and to our ground. So at the top here, we have these leaves which uh, cover our trunk. And here we have this root of the tree, which is very close to the ground. Now, obviously we can draw more here. Let's maybe select the crayon and see we can make these branches longer and we can draw a bunch of stuff on it. Now, you might have noticed that if I keep pressing on the same thing, it shows me the variation of this branch. And sometimes it changes it, sometimes it doesn't. Why does this happen? Well, each tile has a probability set to it. If I go here, instead of terrain, I go to probability, you see that each tile has a probability of one. If, for example, maybe I do not want this uh, to have the probability of one, maybe I want our trees to not have so many leaves, I, would, I could have probability of 0 0.25. And I can apply it to this one. And now, since I have updated this probability, we are going to see branches with leaves much rarer. You see, I press a lot and most of the times it is only it only has branches without leaves now this happens only for tiles that have the same layout in the terrain set so you can see that this vertical tile is represented exactly the same way as this one that's why whenever we draw something on the trunk it's gonna put either this one or that one but now it's going to put the leafless trunk more often than this other one Good. Now, what if we wanted to make this scene look even more complex? Let's say, for example, that we want to have some big bushes here on our branches. We can go to the leaves and simply draw some leaves here. Yeah, but there is a problem. The problem is that our branches get totally destroyed by this leaf that we added. Why? Because we are basically drawing on the same layer and whatever is drawn replaces everything else in the same place. So how do we add multiple layers? Well, if we go here below in the settings, we see that we have layers. Now let's call this layer base. Yeah, why not? Let's call it base. And you see that we are on the base layer and let's add an, another layer and let's call this one, uh, I don't know, details maybe. And this details layer can have a bunch of other things. So if I select the leaves, again, I'm on the base layer. If I click, you see that it replaces the branch. But if I go to details, now you see that everything is grayed out because it is not on the same layer. But if I place something, you see that it's placed on another layer on top of those details. And if I go back to base, you see that those little bushes have been added even without destroying this whole branch. And this can be used in many other ways. So for example, maybe I want this tree to be more complex, maybe more three-dimensional, why not? And let's say we want it to have something like this. Maybe it has another kind of bush here that makes the tree look a bit, a bit more interesting. So when we are going to run the game, we're going to see everything looking like this. You see, I press this highlighted tile map layer. You can highlight it or hide it back. And yeah, we have a pretty interesting abstract tree here. <laughs> okay, but now that we have this whole area, let's try to add a character in our scene. So I just got this, uh, let, let me select the character. I just got this little character. It has some movement and a little animation to it. And let's introduce it to our scene. Let's save and let's press F5 and see what happens. Well, there's a problem, <laughs> obviously. There's a problem because we don't have any kind of collision. Well, the character body is already set. He's on layer one, player, and it can collide with anything that is on the ground layer. But the tile map does not have any kind of physics layer attached to it. So what we can do 
is go to the physics layer and add a new element. And where do we want our ground to be? Well, it's going to be on the ground layer. As you remember here, I have this ground being the second one. And we want it to collide with the player. So it's going to be all right if we set it to one. Now we have to go back to our tile set and specify which part of our terrain is going to collide with it. And again, if I go here, I can select physics layer. You see this new tab appeared here. And you see here that I have a bunch of uh, dots which I can move to define the area which is going to collide with the player. Now, what I can do is select every single tile that I want to collide with the player. And you see that this whole collision area is being added here. So maybe I also want to collide with the leaves. Why not? Let's collide with them as well. I selected everything. And now if I save, I can press F5. And you see that the player no longer falls to into oblivion. And it also collides with the leaves. As you can see, it, uh, it doesn't let me jump through it. Okay, what if we want it to collide with the tree trunk? Let's maybe see a better application of uh, this. Again, I'm going to the tile map and the tile set, and let's select this tree trunk. Now, this tree trunk would be pretty weird if it had a whole collision around it. So we can move these dots and only select the region, maybe, maybe something like this, only select the region of the trunk and not also the air around the trunk. And yeah, after we did it like this, we can select the rest. And as you can see, it repeats this collision, so we don't have to draw it every time. And here we have a branch which we do not want to collide with, so we can add new points on this, and we can draw these points anywhere. I'm going to add a point here, and another point here, which I'm gonna draw like this, and another point here. And you see that I have, sorry, I, uh, I zoomed out a little. So you can see that I have some collision here. It doesn't have to be very precise. Now I can move to the next one and here to add the same collisions as well. Like this. Yeah, it do doesn't matter too much at the moment. And here as well, maybe I remove this with right click. I do not want them anymore. I just want here to draw this base. And see, I got the rough shape of everything. Now, I'm not going to go over all of them. I think you got the idea. But now if I press F5, you can see that our character can move exactly near the tree trunk. And then it collides with it and no longer moves. Now, there are not only physics layer. There are many more things. There are navigation layers, which help you with pathfinding. There are custom data layers, which help you basically set any kind of custom data. You can say here, let's say uh, some property and this property is going to be anything. So you can set a Boolean, so you can give a single tile some Boolean and maybe when the player steps on it, it can send that Boolean to our code and send a true Boolean or a false Boolean or anything like that. And finally, there is rendering, which has occlusion layers. So basically to cast any kind of shadows. Okay, but one final and very useful thing that I want to show you is that tile sets do not work only with images. And what do I mean by that? Well, I can go to a tile set and not only add a tile map, but I can add a whole scene. So if, for example, I had some scene pre-programmed with some particles or with a sign that tells us a message, I can click on plus and see scenes collection. And here I can add my scene. I have created previously a sign scene and this sign scene is basically showing a message and doing some functionality. But what's really cool is that I can select it. Maybe let's go on the tile map to the scene collection. I can select it, come here, and I immediately placed a scene in uh, my game. And if I press F5, you see that it is not a single tile, but it is a scene that does something. It shows a little message bubble. And what's very, very interesting is that this scene is 
optimized inside the tile map. It does not show up in the scene tree. And if I want, I can add not only one, but I can add multiple of these scenes. Okay, but this is pretty much it. Hope it helped you and hope you learned something. If you learned something or if you want to learn more things, please let me know in the comments. And I'm getting very, very close to having a thousand... Sub <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm getting very close to having a thousand subscribers. And I would highly appreciate it if you wanted to help me reach that milestone. So thanks a lot again for watching. Uh, hope I helped you and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.